Okay, hello class. And today is my first day back on campus. So um, you can see my office in the background. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover 12.5 arc length and curvature in this video. So for number one, it says for us to first sketch the plane curve and then for us to find its um, length over the given interval. So I'm gonna minimize this window. I'm gonna maximize this one so you can see all of my paper. And I'm gonna do my best to try to get this done. So I do not remember what the function was, but we can find that out real quick. Oops. Okay. So it was 2t and then negative t and t or the interval was from zero to two. So there's my um, function in uh, the vector value um, notation. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually graph this. So I'm going to start off by making a chart for t and then for r of t. So we're going to start with 0, maybe do 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, all the way to 2. You just want to get a few points, more than 3, so you can see what's going on. It looks like it is linear, so maybe 3 points would have been enough. So we may be able to ignore these. But if anything in here is not linear, you definitely want to have more than three points so you can see how it's curving, okay? But here, if I plug in zero for t, I'm going to get zero, zero, the vector. Um, if I plug in one for t, I'm going to get two comma negative one. And if I plug in two for t, I'm going to get four comma negative two. So if I draw that on my x, y plane, We have zero, zero, we have two for X, negative one for Y. Oh, this is not in three dimensions, it's in two dimensions. I'm sorry. Um, let's go verify, yep, it's in two dimensions. Okay, so we don't need to be graphing in 3D at all. Oh, I have this really good eraser. I don't know about this brand of eraser. It's really, really good. And if I hadn't messed with that with my pencil, it probably would have came out a lot better. Okay. But um, let's draw in two dimensions. So we've got zero, zero, one, two, and negative one, and then three, four, and negative two. And so then it's this line right here. Okay, so if I go to my graph, it's going to be two and negative one should be here. So it's not this graph in the bottom right. Two and negative one, it looks like it's this graph up top. Now the next part asks me for the um, length over the interval. Now, because it is a line, you can pretty much find the point here and the point here and get the distance between those two and it will be the same thing as the length because there's no really arc or curvature to this um, graph. However, just for the sake of practicing our um, curvature or our arc length formulas, I'm gonna actually do it arc length way, okay? So, and we can verify doing the distance method. So we're gonna do it the one way. So since linear um, length equals distance between, I would only want the interval from zero to two, right? So there should not be any arrows here. I just wanted that segment, which is part of the line, okay? 
And since I want to do the whole length, I'm going to do it from this point zero zero and um, this point here, which was four two. Okay. So, and the graph is going in this direction, right? It is a vector value, so it does have a direction. Okay. Now let's see what that distance is going to be. It's going to be the square root of four minus zero squared plus two minus zero squared, which equals the square root of 20 or two square root of five. Okay. So that's what we end up with when we do it the distance formula. Now we should get the same value if we do it the calculus way, right? Not just the algebraic way. Um, but the second way to do would be to do the arc length um, from zero to two, because that's the interval they're asking us about. Um, and then they want us to do the magnitude of r prime dt, okay? So in this case, zero to two, um, r prime would be, for this would be two and negative one, which would be, um, the square root of four plus one, which is five dt, which means square root of five t from zero to two, which is square root of five times two minus zero, which is two square root of five. It's the exact same thing that we got using the distance formula, okay? But this is the answer that they want in the box. So two, square root of five, and let's check this. Okay, we got both checks, so good. Now we're gonna move on to this function. So give me a second, I'm gonna write it down. We have T, oh, this, I can't do this one. Use example one as a guide, okay? So you're gonna do the same thing with the function that you're given and the interval that you're given. You're gonna create a table, you're gonna plot it in two dimensions and see where it is, okay? But I cannot work out number two because it doesn't have anything in red, which means if I do that problem for you, um, you won't be practicing anything on your own on that problem, okay? So I'm gonna go over to number three. Number two is exactly like number, the only difference is that this is not a line. You have T cubed and T squared, that is going to be curved. Um, so you are going to have to still use your arc length formula, but you're not going to be able to use the distance formula. So I know right away that this is not the answer because it should not be straight. These are both curved graphs. Okay. So it is going to make the graph curved. Number three though does have red. So we are going to do number three, two sine of T comma five T comma to cosine of t on the interval zero to pi. Now I'm also gonna, I guess we'll have to figure out our table, but notice how they have the axes rotated. Normally the way we draw this is we draw z going upward and then normally the x-axis is on the left and the y-axis is on the right. What they've done is they've kind of rotated it around. And so now it looks like x is on the right they actually rotated it counterclockwise, right? So this y-axis used to be over here and, or they, they rotated it clockwise. So they rotated it going this way. No, they didn't. They just completely flipped this thing around. So I'm gonna have to pay attention and I wanna make sure I graph mine the same way. So we have to figure out whether our y values are going positive, right? or whether our y values are going negative, okay? Um, but I am gonna draw my axes the same as these. So let me show you what I mean. So for my graph for number three, um, I'm actually going to draw it the way they did where they drew z and then they drew y and then they drew x, okay? I'm gonna draw mine just like the way they have theirs where it's like backwards from what we're normally draw. But for my table, I'm going to use zero, 
um, pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, and pi. This graph is certainly going to be curvy, right? Because the sine and cosine graphs are curvy. So I wanna make sure I include enough graphs in there so that I can figure out what this is gonna look like. So let's do one, two sine of zero. I should know that one, it's zero. And then five times zero is zero, two cosine, it's two times one, which is two. Now pi over four, two sine of pi over four is square root of two. Um, five pi over, oops, delete, over four is about, I'm gonna put five pi over four. Now figure that out, which I think is also square root of two. Um, but for graphing purposes, I need to know that five pi is about 3.9. What is the square root of two though? Double arrow, about 1.4. So we've got these points here. Now let's do two sine of pi over two. So then when I multiply those, I'm gonna get five pi over two. which is about 7.9. And then two cosine of pi over two, which is zero. Then two sine of three pi over four, which is square root of two. And then that would be 15 pi over four. Which is about that's 1.4 and this is about 11.8. And then two cosine of three pi over four is negative square root of two. So about negative 1.4. Then finally, the last point um, pi. So the y value is gonna be zero. That would be five pi. And then the cosine of pi is negative one. So that will be negative two, five, pi is 15.7 and negative two. So it looks like our y coordinates are positive. So that means that we'll probably be going in this direction. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And 16. I don't think we need to go any further than that. So let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then we even have um, one, two, three. So let's see for the first one. We've got 1.4 for X, then 3.9 for Y, and then 1.4 for Z. So this is above the xy plane. This is floating above this xy plane, okay? This guy's above it. Now we have two, so two for x and 7.9 for y. Oh, but the z is zero. So this is on the xy plane. So we went from above the xy plane to on the xy plane. And then 1.4 and 11.8. And should be a little bit further to the right. So we've got two right there. And then this one's going to be 11.8 and 1.4. So it kind of went from the up and it went downward. And then now it's going upward. Or no, it went down even further. It's going downward. I don't know if I'm drawing these curvatures right, but we'll see. And then finally, we're down here, 
and now the last one. So zero for X, 15.7 for Y, and then down one, two for Z. So it's even further lower than this one. Again, I don't know how the curves are supposed to move on this, but um, you can see that there. So let's go look at those options, okay? It is going downward, so, but the Y values are positive. So it's definitely not this one, because notice the Y values are negative. Um, and it's definitely not this one because the Y values do not go up to past 15. Here they do, they do go a little bit past 15, but notice that the Z values are going up, 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 okay? Ours should be going down. So ours are going to be like this image. Okay, now it wants us to find its length. So we definitely need to use the calculus definition. So I'm gonna flip the page over, but we gotta remember our interval and our function, okay? So R was um, two sine of T, five T, two cosine of T. And our interval was from zero to pi. So if we're finding the arc length, then essentially what we're doing is the integral from zero to pi and then the magnitude of r square or r prime. So the derivative of two sine t is negative two cosine t, derivative of five t is five, and the derivative of two cosine t is two sine t in dt. Then the magnitude of this would be four cosine squared t plus 25 plus two sine squared t, not two, four, because you're gonna square it. And then dt. Well, if I factor out the four from these two terms, you're gonna end up with four times cosine squared t plus sine squared t and the 25 off to the side which means you're gonna get the integral of four times one plus 25, which means you're gonna get the integral of square root of 29. So then you end up with the square root of 29, t from zero to pi, which equals the square root of 29, pi minus zero, which gives you pi square root of 29. And so this is the value that we get for that box. So let's go plug that in pi square root of 29. And let's see if our graph and our answer is correct. So our graph was correct and our answer here is correct. Okay. Now, um, what are we doing next? Number four, find the curvature K of the curve where S is the arc length parameter, okay? And so it has number four, R of S equals two plus S, and the second component is one, okay? And they want us to find curvature. So if we need to find curvature, we're going to use um, this formula so we're gonna use K equals T prime, the magnitude of T prime over the magnitude of R prime. Both of those being vectors, right? So let's see. First, we gotta figure out what T is before we can find out T prime. So I know that R prime is going to be one comma zero. I know that um, the magnitude of R prime is going to be the square root of one plus zero, which is just one. And so then I know that T is going to be R prime over the magnitude of R prime, which is one comma zero over one, which equals just one comma zero. 
So then what is, that's not T prime, it's just T. So then T prime would be the derivative of this. The derivative of one is zero and the derivative of zero is zero. So curvature K ends up becoming the magnitude of zero, zero over the magnitude of our prime, which we already did, which was one. Well, the square root of zero plus zero is just zero. And so we get that the curvature for this problem is just zero. So we'll go in here and type in zero. And it is correct. So let's move on to number five. So number five has a function of eight cosine of four pi t comma eight sine of four pi t. And so we're gonna follow that same formula. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what R prime is. This one's gonna be a little bit trickier. We get, um, we get eight, negative eight, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine of four pi t, but then the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of this angle, which is four pi, okay? That's just the multiplication. So then the same thing's gonna happen here. You're gonna have eight times four pi, but the derivative of sine is cosine. So then the magnitude of R prime is going to be the square root of, um, that's negative 32. So it's gonna be 32 positive squared pi squared sine squared or pi t. That's this term squared. Um, plus this guy squared, which will be 32 squared pi squared and then cosine squared. Now, if I factor out the 32 squared pi squared, I just get sine squared plus cosine squared, which is one. And so if you simplify the radical and everything, you just get 32 pi, which tells us that T equals negative 32 pi sine of four pi T comma 32 pi cosine of four pi T all over 32 pi, which actually simplifies to negative sine of four pi T comma positive cosine of four pi T. So then now for curvature, we need um, the magnitude of T prime over the magnitude of R prime. So that means the magnitude of the derivative of this. So we have a negative, the derivative of sine is cosine, but we have to multiply by the chain rule. So there will be a four pi in the front. Same thing here, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but then we have to multiply by the chain rule. So we'll have a four pi there. And then at the bottom, remember what, um, the magnitude of our prime is 32 pi. So this becomes, um, if you factor out a negative four pi, this would be negative one eighth. And let's see, what was the question again? I just want an okay. Oh, 
Oh, we still have to find the magnitude of this thing. So we still have the magnitude bars. So I took out the negative four, which is not gonna affect the magnitude. But when I take the magnitude of this, I get negative one eighth times the square root of cosine squared of four pi t plus sine squared of four pi t. Doesn't matter what the angle is, as long as it's the same, the inside of that radical will equal one. And so that's just not one. So you still get negative one eight. So sorry, I was not talking square this term plus square this term. This, it doesn't matter what the angle is as long as it's the same. Sine squared plus cosine squared will equal one. And so it's just negative one eighths times one, which is just negative one eighths. So in here, we're gonna hit negative one over eight. Let's see if we get it right. No, I got it wrong. Why did I get it wrong? Oh, I know why I got it wrong. Because I really shouldn't have factored out this negative. Um, if I wouldn't have factored out that negative, actually, I shouldn't have factored it out at all. I didn't think it was going to affect it. It shouldn't, but for some reason, the negative does. Because what happens when you square negatives? It get positives, right? And the curvature should be this positive value. So let's try that again. So we'll just do the magnitude. So you get the square root of negative four pi times negative four pi is 16 pi squared. And then when you square that, Plus, same thing here, negative four pi times negative four pi, 16 pi squared. All of that over 32 pi. Then if you simplify this by factoring out the pi squared, you have cosine squared of something plus sine squared of something, which is just gonna equal one. So you get the square root of 16 pi squared over 32 pi, which is four pi over 32 pi. And then so you get a positive one eighth. And that should be the answer. So let's go verify. Okay, so now we can move on to number six. So we have y equals x minus four x to the negative one, and then we have x equals two. And they want curvature and then um, the radius of curvature, which is one over k. So in this case, we do have to follow a different formula because we're given the function not parametrized and not in a vector um, valued function. So the formula that we're gonna use is K equals um, the absolute value of Y double prime um, of two because that's our X value. And then over one plus Y prime of two squared and the whole thing raised to the three halves. Okay, so I do have to find these values real quick. Let's find y prime. That would be one, and then it would be negative four times negative one x to the negative two, which is the same as saying one plus four over x squared. So y prime of two would be one plus four over two squared, which is one plus one, which is just two. So that means at the bottom, I have two squared to the three halves, which means at the bottom I have five to the three halves. Now let's find y double prime of two. So y double prime means take the derivative of, let me fix this first before I made the fraction. 
this is the version that I want to use to take the second derivative. Okay, just multiplying those signs together, but not making a fraction. So the derivative of one is zero. And then we have four, we'll bring down the negative two and then decrease the power by one. So this becomes negative eight X to the negative three or negative eight over X cubed. So then Y prime of two is gonna be negative eight over two cubed, which is negative eight over eight, which is just negative one. So this is gonna be the absolute value of negative one. Okay. So then we end up with one over five to the three halves or just five to the negative three halves. And that cannot be simplified. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Um, but this is K. K equals one over five to the three halves, which means the reciprocal of K should be the reciprocal of this, which would be five to the three halves over one, which is five to the three halves, okay? So let's go type in those numbers. So we have this for K and this for one over K. No, that's not what I was trying to type in there. Five raised to the three halves. Oops. There we go. Now let's check it. Okay, two green checks. Awesome. Now we we'll move on to number seven. Number seven seems to be the same thing. It's just a different function, right? So for number seven, we have y equal to e to the negative x over three, and x equal to six is our value. So we're gonna follow the same formula. So first I'm gonna find um, y prime. So we get e to the negative x over three times the derivative of what's in this exponent, which is negative one third, which gives me, um, negative one third e to the negative x over three. And then y double prime would be this factor times e to the negative x over three times the derivative of this again, negative one third. Negative one third times negative one third gives me positive one ninth e to the negative x over three. So then what is y prime of six since that's the x value? That would be negative one third e Negative six divided by three would be negative two. And then y double prime of six would be one ninth e negative six over three, which would still be negative two. So for curvature, we get the absolute value of y double prime over one plus y prime squared raised to the three halves. So this becomes um, one over nine e squared and then one plus, if I square that, that would be one ninth e to the negative four. Now I'm not sure how complicated they're going to expect the answer. Um, I think I do have to simplify this a little bit so one thing I'm gonna do is rewrite this with the e to the fourth at the bottom. And then I'm going to have to um, factor this out. So I'm gonna have one over nine e to the fourth times nine e to the fourth plus one. Right, if I were to distribute that, I would get one. And if I were to distribute it here, I would get this fraction. So then let's see, 
Um, the square root of this is one three e squared, and I still have to cube it. Whereas I still have this raised to the three halves power. So what does this mean? If I flip this over, this is going to be one nine e squared times um, cube, it would be 27 e to the six over what? Which means I will get nine e to the fourth in the numerator. Okay, so this is curvature. And then if you want the radius of curvature, you take the reciprocal which will be nine e to the fourth plus one to the three halves over nine e to the fourth. Oops, I can't see that. There we go. And so that would be what I enter in the computer for curvature and then for the radius. So that's gonna be quite a bit to type in there. Let's work with it. So you have nine e raised to the fourth, Downstairs, we have parentheses, 9e raised to the fourth plus one raised to the three halves. And then over here, we're going to have it the other way around. So parentheses, 9e raised to the fourth um, plus one raised to the three halves. And then downstairs, 9e to the fourth. So let's check those and see if they're good. Mm -mm, I did not like it. Let me see. What did I do? Let's make sure we did everything right. So we wrote down the correct problem. We took the first derivative. So we got this. We took the second derivative. So another negative one third made it positive one ninth. We plugged in six. So we got negative one third, six over two is two. And same thing here. Then we took the absolute value of y double prime and then one plus y prime squared. So when I squared this, I ended up with one ninth positive e to the negative four. And then this, I don't need the bars. And I stuck the negative downstairs. So we ended up with one over nine e squared. And here we have one over nine e to the fourth. I factored out the one over 90 to the fourth. So that gives me one. That gives me this fraction. I factored this out and I took the square root of both of these. So the square root of nine is three. The square root of e to the fourth is e squared. But then I cubed it, one cubed and this thing cubed. So it gave me 27 e to the sixth. But then to bring it to the top, I flipped it over. So I get, oh, I get three. Nine goes into 27 three times. That's where I made my mistake. But e to the six, take away e squared, I do get e to the fourth. So everything else I get correct. It's just this one number I messed up. It should be a three. So right here is where I messed up. Nine goes into 27 three times, and I had a nine, okay? And then when you put it at the bottom, it goes there. So that's where my mistake was. Let's go fix this one little number, and then we should have it. Yes, see, my one error. <laughs> Almost done. We have one more, number eight. Okay. So 
So on number eight, I have y equals three cosine of x over two. And we are working from zero to pi, it looks like over there um, here. But it says, find all points of the graph where the function has a curvature equal to zero. So we're basically finding k and then setting it equal to zero and finding all the x values in this interval, OK? So well, they want the whole point, not just the x value. So let's go over here. So we first need to find the curvature. So y prime is going to be 3 cosine of x over 2 times the derivative of this, which means 3 halves. Oh, derivative of cosine is sine, right? And not only that, it's negative sine. So then this will be negative 3 halves sine. So coefficient 3, derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then the derivative of the angle is 1 half. So that's my chain rule part. And if I combine the two numbers, we get negative 3 halves sine of x over 2. So y double prime is going to be negative 3 halves. The derivative of sine is cosine. But then I have to multiply by the chain rule, another 1 half, which gives me negative 3 fourths cosine. So then let's see, k is going to equal the absolute value of this over um, 1 plus negative 3 halves sine of x over 2 squared raised to the 3 halves. So I get 1 plus 9 over 4 sine squared to the 3 halves. So remember, in order for us to figure out when k equals 0, it just means to figure out when this fraction equals 0. And it's enough to figure out when this equals zero just to figure out when this is equal to zero. And the absolute value is equal to zero only when the inside is equal to zero. And so if I divide both sides by negative three fourths, I'm basically figuring out when this equals zero. And that happens when the angle is equal to um, cosine of zero would be pi over two plus pi k. Because on the unit circle, the x value is zero here and here. I am so sorry, I keep forgetting that my camera is really, really short. So I can only catch so much in the camera. I have to keep pushing my paper up, I apologize. So to set the curvature equal to zero would be to set the whole fraction equal to zero. But if you multiply by your common denominator on both sides, it's the same thing as just taking the numerator equal to zero. And then if I have the absolute value bars, the only way it's going to equal zero is if whatever's inside here is actually zero, because the absolute value of zero is zero, right? And then here I just multiplied both sides by a negative four thirds or divided by negative three fourths, same thing. Anything times zero is still zero. So I have a zero here, but then this will cancel this away. So I just have cosine of x over two. Now that angle equals zero, cosine of this angle equals zero only when the angle is at pi over two, three pi over two, or any other time I go around and around. So if, if I keep adding pi units, I will keep getting to each variation of this. But I got to multiply everybody by two so I could solve for x. So I get x equals pi plus two pi k. So remember our interval at the very, very top our interval is zero to pi. If k equals, um, 
I don't know. Um, negative one, little k, not capital K for curvature. Little k equals negative one. X would equal pi plus two pi times negative one. Actually, you're just supposed to let k equal zero. This would give you pi minus two pi, which gives you negative pi. And negative pi is not in the interval. If I let k equal zero, I get pi plus two pi times zero, which is just pi plus zero. This is in the interval. And if I let k equal to two, I get pi plus two pi times one, which is pi plus two pi, which is three pi. And this is out of the interval, okay? Um, so we cannot, these two are not gonna be our options. This one is going to be our x value. So in that point, x comma y, we know that the x is pi. It's the only one of these answers that is in the interval that they gave me. But then if I wanna figure out the y value, I'm gonna to have to do three cosine of pi over two, which is cosine of pi over two is zero, so we get zero for the y coordinate. And this is what they want, is that point. So pi comma zero. And let's see. Yep, we got it correct. And you will watch this video and then answer the question below and the same for number 10. Make sure you answer that question. Um, but other than that, that is it for this section. The next thing we'll be covering is the review for test one.